interesting dilemma this week. Um, I had a bit of, um, I guess, misunderstanding that kept repeating as a misunderstanding with um, someone who was supposed to deliver something on time, contract, and uh, this other company, this other person, um, isn't delivering it on time. And I'm not able to connect with them. They're not able to return a phone call, return an email. It's just not working at all. Meanwhile, I have a meeting coming up where I have to report to a larger committee about how things are going. And so I'm sitting there thinking, how do I do this? How do I do this, given that I'm not allowed to talk badly about someone and I'm not allowed to gossip? So how do the limitations of Jewish appropriate speech, Lashon Hara gossiping, how am I supposed to report on this? And on the one hand, I thought, okay, well, I could just name the company. But everyone will know this is a company owned by one person. I, I'm just sort of getting around it. Maybe if I use initials and I just sort of talk about it with initials, but really, who am I kidding? Because actually, I know there are several people in this committee who work very closely with this other person. The initials are going to match immediately. So I, I can sort of play around with it to create the veil of anonymity, but the truth is, they'll know immediately. And so I start to go to the books and I start to read up about how has this been solved in the past. I can't possibly be the only person who's run into this. What do I do? And I'm breaking my head. How am I supposed to report on this and still preserve the dignity of the other person by not gossiping and not misrepresenting? And in all of it, at one point, I get to a part where I said, enough, 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 enough. Why am I protecting this other person? They clearly didn't meet their expectations. They were stringing a lot of people along, waiting for information that wasn't coming, frustrating everybody. Why am I taking such lengths to sit there and figure out how to protect their dignity when it didn't seem that they for a moment cared about anyone else's? And as I was in that wonderful place of sitting there really asking myself, why am I doing this? I realized that all of this effort has nothing to do with them. And that's, at that moment, for me, the brilliance of the Jewish approach to how we talk. Because it has nothing to do with the other person. And it has everything to do with my processing. If I simply speak about this other person the way that at that moment I was tempted to speak about them, they have changed who I am. And now it's not just about they didn't meet a deadline or they didn't meet an expectation. I gave them way more power than that. I allowed them to change who I am in how I deal with people and how I represent myself and others. The beauty of it is it gets me to keep being who I am and not allow myself to get roped into so easily negative behavior. If somebody's doing something wrong to me, it's almost as if my impulse is, well, then why would I protect them? They're in the wrong. But then we talk about Jewish tradition and Jewish law saying, no, no, it isn't about the other person. It's the mirror. Who are you? All of the commandments are there to say, who are you? Not assessing everybody else. Who are you? And once you see who you are, these are the commandments that are the tools that help you be who you are. So I sit back and I figure out how am I going to present this at the meeting. It's the right challenge to break my head over. It's the right thing to go through all of the possibilities because ultimately the one that feels right is the one that's true to me and the one I'm going to check with Jewish law.